All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the, the No Fear Job Search webinar series. Uh, my name is John Shields. I'm the marketing manager at JobScan. So if you're not familiar with JobScan, uh, we're a Seattle-based company that's dedicated to making the best online tools for job seekers. So, you know, we put this webinar series together um, in response to, you know, all the stress and strangeness that's in the world and job market right now. So our goal with this is, is simply to get as many job seekers as we can, you know, in front of the people and the tools that can help them, you know, right now, today. So um, this is the, the second of 15 webinars um, in this No Fear Job Search series. Uh, we, we hope to see you in some of the other sessions. I know some of you were probably in this morning's session. Uh, and you can check out the entire series uh, there at jobscan.co slash no dash fear. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of really great presenters, so uh, be sure to check those out if you haven't already. And with that, I'm you know, delighted to turn it over to today's presenter, uh, Melanie L. Denny. Uh, we've known Melanie for uh, about a year at this point. We've collaborated on a couple projects, and um, she's a award-winning career coach and, and does some really, really great work um, down there. I think she's based in the uh, greater Orlando area. So uh, without further ado, uh, Melanie, it's, it's all yours. Thank you so much, John. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I really appreciate this opportunity because I know that a lot of people are needing help, guidance, encouragement right now. So I'm just over the moon for this opportunity to really share information that could help people. That's what it boils down to. Okay, so what to do if you get laid off? Again, I'm super excited about this particular topic because I have dealt with a population that has been laid off. So I'm familiar with some of the nuances that come who feel lost, confused, frustrated, angry. And so um, let's dive in because I have a lot to share. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing that, oops, I want you to realize that you are not alone okay this is some unprecedented times right now and with the latest information that i got this week 26 million people have filed for unemployment that doesn't mean 26 million are unemployed or got laid off that's just the number that filed over the last five weeks and by the end of this week it'll be millions more so just know that this is not about you per se, as a contributor, as an employee, as a worker. It's about what's going on in the economy right now, and it's just business, right? 12.5% is staggering in terms of the unemployment rate. And um, some experts at the New York Times put that stat out there that they feel like this is really at that level, and it's escalating very quickly. So again, just know that you are not alone, okay? I wanted to throw in some encouragement to start off because again, being laid off is not pleasant, right? It's not a good feeling. But from the words of Mr. Walt Disney, all the adversity I've had in my life, all my troubles and obstacles have strengthened me. You may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. So what that means to me is when you feel like you've been knocked down and you feel like it, you're hopeless and you feel like you're at your lowest, you will rise and it can be the beginning of something great and wonderful, okay? So now I wanna talk about your mindset because this is very important when you go through life and you go through your career after getting laid off you're gonna feel something you're gonna feel something negative and although sometimes our inclination is to just go get another job we have to deal with the emotional impact that 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 makes on us right so acknowledge your feelings you're gonna feel angry you're gonna feel hopeless you're gonna feel scared acknowledge those feelings and don't ignore them but also don't dwell on them either try to keep a positive attitude 
and get in the state of gratitude, right? Because although things are really, really bad, they could still be a lot worse. So what are you grateful for, right? What is actually good? You're here, you're alive, you have technology to allow you to be here right now and listen to this today. You have resources at your disposal. You have, you know, good health, hopefully. You've got, the sun is shining, you've got fresh air. So just look around for the little things, right? You have running water, right? And once you put that into perspective, then it doesn't seem as bad in the moment, okay? So just try to think about the good things and things that are happening that are a blessing. The next thing is to vent. Let these emotions out. Find outlets to express yourself. So whether that's going to a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a coach, a therapist, your journal, right? Whatever that may be for you, let the emotions out, let the feelings out because you, the last thing you want to do is have all these negative emotions boiled up and bottled up inside as you embark on a new job search. It's going to shine through. It's going to come through that you're feeling upset or angry or tense or scared, right? So try to let those emotions out. If you need to work out to let off some steam, do whatever you need to do so that you can breathe, all right? And stay optimistic. In other words, instead of dwelling on the future in a negative sense, right? Like I just shared those stats and like the fact that they're going to be rising. There are other stats that show that businesses are opening and growing and starting. And instead of thinking about future in a negative, think about future in the positive. Well, what if I could actually start a business out of this? Or what if... I could actually pursue my real dreams in terms of career move, right? What if I can land a new job with even higher salary, right? So just think about what ifs in a positive way. That way you're not dwelling on your fears and things that could go wrong, but you're being optimistic and it feels good to think about the future in a positive light, all right? So after you've dealt with your emotions, First things first is you need to file for unemployment. Do it ASAP. If you got laid off yesterday, you need to file today. If you're not laid off quite yet and you feel like it's coming, make sure you're ready to file that application because that's the first thing and the easiest way to get some money in the door, right? So I know it's crazy right now. I'm in Florida, <laughs> in the state of Florida is crazy however once your application is in at least you know there's an opportunity again for you to get some money in the door asap okay and do it sooner than later because it's taking a while right so it could take weeks for the money to actually show up but you got to do your part so file for unemployment with your state and i know that there's also a federal um subsidy that's also coming and sometimes that comes first before your state can get it done so Make sure you file for that unemployment. The next thing I want you guys to focus on is assess, right? Again, before just saying, oh, I need a job and going applying, really sit down and figure out what do I really have and need right now in terms of my finances? How can I cut spending? That's going to be important, right? Because of course, you just lost a paycheck, right? So once you get that unemployment application in, now it's time to sit down and assess where you can cut back, right? I know a lot of us are already cutting back because we can't necessarily go out for drinks anymore, right? But there could be other things that you can do without for right now. Assess and cut back. Accept assistance. What I mean by that is there are a lot of programs that companies are doing right now in the midst of all of this chaos where they're allowing you to defer payments, they're allowing you to, um, you know, um, delay your payments and in some cases give you back money. I know there's some uh, car insurance companies that are actually giving a certain percentage of, you know, premiums back. So with all the bills you have, give each and every one of them a call and say, hey, I'm going through a lot right now. What can you do for me? And see what support and assistance that they can offer you to kind of help out right now. Look into healthcare. So a lot of times when you get laid off, 
unfortunately, your health care has been cut off. So how can you cover yourself? Are the COBRA options something that you can pursue? Um, can you get health care through the government? Can you pay out of pocket if you need health care? That's going to be something else that you really need to sit and assess, right? Um, and then evaluate your savings. So if you have savings, how much do you have? How long can you survive realistically? So that way you kind of know what you're up against. Again, instead of just rushing to go get a job, maybe you can relax a little bit because you have a certain amount of money in the bank that can carry you through a certain time. But you have to sit down and assess all of these things. So take a minute, sit down with your life partner and really figure out where you stand financially. The next thing is assess your career needs, right? So you may have determined that you are ready to shift careers because you've had this dream job in your head for so long and now you're laid off. You're thinking, maybe I can pursue that now, right? So if that's where you want to go, then you know now you have the plan and you can move in that direction. If you found that, you know what, we're not going to survive, we need money ASAP, maybe you need to go Uber, right? A gig opportunity like that could be helpful right now. Maybe you can actually offer some services to companies based on your skill sets in a consulting capacity, right? Maybe you want to just go back to work doing what you've been doing, right? And so that linear position just in a different company is what you need, right? Or you want to switch industry. So maybe, you know, you're in hospitality and that doesn't have a great outlook right now. And you want to move your talents into a new thriving industry like maybe healthcare or technology, right? You need to get focused on what you want to do next because, again, you don't want to act out of desperation and you want to have a target in mind so that your job search efforts can be more fruitful. All right. The next thing I want you to think about is how will you allocate your time? You want to plan to be productive because sometimes we get laid off, we fall into depression, we feel hopeless, we look around, we watch the news, right? The numbers of corona cases are rising, businesses keep shutting down. And you just don't want to do anything. And you just lay on the couch. And before you know it, it's bedtime. And you've done nothing much in terms of productivity. Now, that's okay. Day one or day two, right? Because maybe you need a minute. However, at some point, it's time to get back up and be productive. So schedule out your day. How much time are you going to spend towards job searching? right? Can you dedicate a certain block of time based on family situation? I know a lot of us are homeschooling young children, right? I know that it's important for us to have me time, right? And then there's other family priorities that just need to happen, household activities that need to happen. And so if you can take a minute to sit down and say, okay, I have these set of hours to do things that I need to get done realistically, how much time can I dedicate to my job search activities based on all the other things I have going on? And dedicate some time, schedule in that time, because that way you know this is my job search time and you can focus in and do what you need to do, right? Plan to be productive. All right. So now that you have your goals, you've assessed, and you're ready to get out there, there is hope, guys. Companies are definitely hiring, okay? I did a quick kind of search, and these were the top 10 companies hiring, basically ranked by open opportunities. McDonald's, number one, and it goes all the way down. Amazon, of course, is on the list. Donald, Dollar General is on the list, and these are not just those customer service roles. There are also corporate type roles in here as well. 
So don't feel doom and gloom. There are opportunities out there, right? There are opportunities out there. Here's the other thing I wanted to uh, kind of give you in terms of some hints and different things to look for that will help you to uncover opportunities that are out there. Right now, Indeed has rolled out this new initiative where if you put the hashtag ready to work in your application, this will indicate to companies that you can start ASAP. And so if they're looking to hire ASAP and you put that, they know, oh, great, this is a great candidate. She's ready or he is ready to go, right? There's also now on Indeed an icon next to each job um, for urgently hiring. So now when you're looking on Indeed, you can tell the companies that need to hire quickly, right? This is kind of what it looks like. So this is a risk management job. And here's the little icon, urgently hiring. So you can go through and find jobs now, okay? Because if you need to work now, that's a great way to identify these opportunities. Here's another thing I wanna point out, LinkedIn. When you're on LinkedIn, you can actually search hashtags. It will search postings that real people have posted using these hashtags. Hashtag hiring now is very popular and hashtag still hiring is another one. You could also try just hashtag hiring, um, hashtag whatever your job title is, and then you can add in your city state or uh, whatever other things you're looking for. Work from home, hashtag virtual work, things like that. So I'm just gonna share a, screen, a screenshot. I did this the other day to demonstrate what it would look like. So in the top, you can see I use hashtag hiring now and I put operations manager as my job. And right away, some person that works at Sirius has posted a day ago that they're looking for an operations manager. There's a real person tied to this. She posted it. So you can contact her directly, follow up with her, ask her questions about the role. Um, and you can see where hiring now was one of the hashtags that she used, right? So that's a great way to find opportunities right now if you need to, to get to work ASAP, okay? Here's another one, Google Jobs. You may know this, you may not. Some people don't realize they can do this. But when you go to Google and you type in, you know, operations manager job, the first thing is typically in a box and there's a blue headline heading when you click on that it takes you to something that looks like this and this is so powerful because what google is doing is pulling jobs from everywhere on the web so when you find a job that you want or where the job came from and many times there's multiple um, uh, websites that you can apply for this one job. And so the real thing I wanna show you though, is the fact that you can filter by date posted. So I want everything that was posted in the last three days. You know, these are new opportunities that they just posted that they need now. You can also filter by location and put work from home and see what pops up for you, okay? So that's another way, again, you need to work now, you wanna find some opportunities, that's another way that you can uh, find some. Here's another thing I wanna share with you, candor.co. When I saw this, I was so excited <laughs> for job seekers because it's real time. So I forget the name of the guy, him and another young man started this, and basically it's real time updates from companies sharing if they're fr frozen in terms of hiring, if they're furloughing, if they're laying off or if they're hiring. This is a screenshot from that website. If you see the arrow on the bottom left, there's 7,000 plus companies on this list. 
So it's alphabetical and you could go through and see what's going on with these companies. So three birds marketing right now is laying off, unfortunately. However, 3i Infotech, 3M, 3N, 3Play Media, they're all hiring, right? So this can help you as well to see what companies are hiring. You can do a, a control F to find and search for certain companies that you want to know about as well. Or you can just go down the list and check it all out. Okay, this is updating live. So basically what's happening and how it works is people who work for these companies are submitting the information, feeding it straight into this list. So they, there may be duplicates because you know multiple people are, are updating it however it's a powerful tool so hopefully that's helpful all right now i wanted to touch on resumes because it's a hot topic right everyone wants to know about their resume <clears throat> and i know there was a session this morning about resumes and there'll be two more about resumes but I, I, I would be remiss if I don't mention, you need to get your resume in order and give you some tips on how to do that, okay? You wanna make sure your resume looks good. If it looks rudimentary or sloppy, then you've put off a lackluster perception of yourself. Make sure you look polished, right? So make sure it's formatted nicely, add a splash of color, don't be shy with that. And just make sure that when someone looks at it right away, their impression is good, okay? Be intentional. So remember what we talked about, what do you want now? What do you want next? Knowing that will help you to use the right keywords based on the industry and the job function that you're targeting. You're going to want to make sure that you're using the right jargon and making sure that your information is most relevant to that type of position. So in other words, if you wanted to make a career shift right now, um, say you are in marketing and now you want to do, I don't know, accounting. <laughs> That's probably a bad example, but it can be done. Um, then you don't necessarily want to emphasize all your marketing skills. You want to emphasize any and everything you've done with numbers, right? So that's what I mean about being intentional because they want to, you want the person to look at it and say, oh yeah, she'd be great for an accounting role versus why is this marketing person applying for accounting? Okay. So definitely want to take some time to make sure that, that your resume aligns with what you want next. Make sure it's value-based. So companies want to know that you're able to come in and make an impact. And the only way that you could show that is by showing or telling them what you've done in your past that have impacted your past business, your, your past employer, right? So accomplishments, quantifiables, numbers, right? That type of thing is going to be so important for your resume because it shows that you're good at what you do, right? That's the proof that says I'm good at what I do because my efforts has resulted in this. And then you want to make it enticing. What's unique about you, right? Because guess what? There are hundreds, thousands of people going after that same job, especially now where the job market is not as strong as it once was. And so how are you going to stand out, right? You need to make sure that that comes across as well, because when it comes down to it, everyone's going to have that experience. Everyone's going to have that degree or certificate or training. What's now going to be your differentiating factor? You've got to figure that out. And make sure you incorporate that into your resume. And as you talk with people and you interview, make sure that that is coming across as well. Right? So that's the, those are the tips I have for your resume. LinkedIn. Listen, if you're in a job search, I absolutely recommend you have a LinkedIn profile. Why? Well, first of all, 94% of recruiters are using LinkedIn to search for their candidates. So if that's the case, and you're not there, you're missing some opportunities, right? Your job is to get found on LinkedIn. So how do you do that? Use targeted keywords. Again, what are the skills that employees are looking for based on your job target, 
make sure those are sprinkled throughout your LinkedIn profile on the headline, on your about section. Um, you could put them in your job titles and then the skills and endorsement section, make sure they're there as well. That definitely helps. But not just putting keywords, you have to engage because you wanna be active and build that visibility as well. So get on LinkedIn, right? Dust off that profile, make sure it's up to date, right? Make sure that the value, again, that you have, have brought to your past employers comes through and make sure that the information is fresh because the last thing you want to do is have an opportunity in front of you and then they look you up on LinkedIn and you look out of date. That could be harmful to your chances of getting in. So update that profile, make sure it's targeted with keywords, engage, and then you can also use it to your advantage by searching for people. So let's say you found a job on um, Indeed or the Google jobs, right? It's one thing to apply, but then you may hear crickets. It's actually probable that you will hear crickets. So what can you do? Well, you can go to LinkedIn and in the search, you can put in the company name and then go to the people that work there and do some digging to figure out who would my colleagues be and who would my future boss be, right? And reach out to them. Hello, I saw this posting on Indeed or wherever, and I have some questions about the role. Do you have five minutes to answer some questions for me? Or, hi, I saw this posting on Indeed, and I would love to know who the, um, contact person would be for this position, right? People want to help. And if they see your message, they're more, they may respond. So now you have a real person instead of just submitting your resume into what I like to call the black hole of nothingness, right? So LinkedIn is so powerful. You definitely want to use it and be active there and take advantage of some of the search features as well. Hey, Melanie. Yes. Before you uh, get, get off of uh, LinkedIn, <laughs> yes. uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, searching for hashtags to, to find uh, mm -hmm. people posting about job listings. Uh, we got a question come in um, asking if you think it's a good idea to put hashtags on your LinkedIn profile itself. Yeah, why not? I mean, here's the thing. You can follow hashtags, right? So if I'm a recruiter, I may be following a certain hashtag. So let me see, it could be just um, open for new opportunities. I know there's a hashtag going around O-N-O, -O, which means open for new opportunities. I wouldn't put it on your headline and make it like, you know, big and bold because that kind of comes off as desperate in a sense. However, you could sprinkle it into your, um, your about section, right? And it may show up or you can you can post a post and put that hashtag in there and that could help, you know, build some visibility because I do know that some recruiters do search for that hashtag as well. So that could be something that you could use to your advantage. Great. And uh, also, you know, on your LinkedIn profile, um, mm -hmm. I have another question in from Sherry asking, um, when you should update your last employer term date on LinkedIn after, after a layoff? Yes. So for me, I advise my clients based on their comfort level to keep it there as long as you can without being deceitful. So for example, if you got laid off and you have a severance, you could put it as present until that severance runs out because you're technically kind of like still on payroll. Um, the reason I say that, and it's a little bit of a hack, is because you look more attractive when you're working versus when you're not working. So that, that end date kind of puts you in a pool of, ah, she's not working right now. So she kind of looks less valuable in a sense. However, now there's millions upon millions that are not working. So it wouldn't be that frowned upon. And you can even throw in there, you know, um, um, 
laid off resulting from COVID-19. Because everyone knows that this is going on. So you may not necessarily need to use that tactic, um, but that would be my advice. All right, great. Uh, just one last follow up there and then I'll, I'll let you uh, continue on. So especially these days, you know, one thing people are dealing with more often is uh, being furloughed, which is, you know, a little more uncertainty. How would you um, deal with the end dates or, um, mm. you know, noting that on your LinkedIn profile or your resume, just, just however uh, Ava sent that question in? Yeah, so it, de it depends, right? So my husband was furloughed. And he didn't update anything on his LinkedIn profile because in his mind, he still has a job because they gave him a date that they're going to return to work. Um, he did get another job in the meantime, right? But if you're furloughed, that just means that you're temporarily laid off. Now, if you have no intentions on going back or you feel like they're not going to bring you back, then I would still, I would still be inclined to say, keep it as present and continue your work your your search just letting them know you know we're furloughed and i don't think it's looking good for us to come back so i want to be proactive about landing something else right now great thank you absolutely so the next thing i want to talk about is just networking right because honestly the online application process it's not the best bet in terms of finding your next role. And so the competition there is crazy. The, you're up against the applicant tracking software and JobScan is a great resource to help you combat that. So take advantage of some of those specials. But really, I'm always telling my clients to find people, not jobs, right? Because that's going to be the most effective way to get your foot in the door. And so network. And I know network sometimes sounds like such a daunting thing, right? Oh, I have to go network. I gotta go to this networking event. Oh, I gotta go beg people for work. But it's not about that. It's about building relationships with people. And so instead of seeing it as I'm going there to beg for something or you know, ask for a favor, just go there with the intentions of, or approach people with the intentions of getting to know who they are and seeing how you can benefit each other. So join industry associations, right? There's a lot, there's tons of industry associations where you could join, especially now they're all gonna be online. So if you're introverted, this is perfect for you. Um, they're probably having you know, virtual meetups. Go there, talk to people, right? Connect with them and just get to know who they are and let them get to know you. So when opportunities do arise or they hear of something, then they know, oh, you know what? I know this person, I just met them. This could be a good opportunity for them. Or you can ask them after you build some rapport, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. If you know of anything, let me know. But you have to know what you want. You're not just gonna network, just I need a job, right? You need to know exactly what you're looking for. Past colleagues are another place to go. Oh my goodness, a lot of my clients, I say, who do you know already from past companies? And then work it into the conversation where, you know what, I'm also looking, right? Can you hear me? I think I froze. Uh, hey, Melanie, I can hear you now. I think you froze. If you could back up just uh, 20, 20 seconds, that would be fine. Okay. I was just saying uh, for past colleagues, try not to come off as if you just need a favor, right? Really show true, genuine concern about them. How have they been doing? Catch up to see what companies they've went through throughout their career since leaving that job you have, you had together. And then um, let them know what you've been up to. And then when the conversation opens up, hey, you know what? I'm looking right now for this, this, and this. Do you know of anything? Is your company hiring, et cetera? This works so well for a lot of my clients. Friends and family. You never know where your next opportunity is going to come from. So you don't know if your kid brother knows a guy 
who knows a guy, <laughs> right? So just let them know, hey, I'm looking for this. So they know exactly what you're needing so they can identify, oh, you know what? I know this person and then connect you. And of course, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I mean, where are we at now? Like 700 million plus users on LinkedIn. The opportunities there are endless. And again, it's not just, oh, I'm going to connect with her because she works there and I need a job. It's okay. She works there. Maybe she can help me and I can help her. Build that rapport, build a relationship, ask a quick favor, don't take up too much time, and really try to build something authentic. So when you actually start getting out there, interviewing, doing these screenings, etc., what employers are looking for now is more than just your skill set, to be honest right? Because there's a lot going on right now. And you need to show a deeper le level of who you are as a person right now. And so they're looking for people that are, can not just do the job, but can come with a level of poise. Remember in the beginning when I said you need to deal with your emotions, because you want to come into an interview feeling good and and confident and optimistic again people can feel that energy and so if you come poised and collected it you don't look frazzled and scared and all over the place like you can't handle the pressure because there's a lot of pressure going on in the world in general and in the workplace they're also dealing with a lot as well so you want to make sure that you can show them you can handle it and you want to not focus so much on what's going wrong right now, but you want to show them a sense of, I'm optimistic about the future and give them ideas and different perspectives that you have about the company and how they can adapt as we go through all of this right now, right? They also want to know that you can embrace change and innovation because the way we work has dramatically changed very abruptly too and so showing and demonstrating the fact that you can roll with the punches embrace change and be okay is going to be important an important skill that they also want to know that you can bring to their organization another thing especially for leaders is that emotional intelligence right because now it was important before but now you've got to really know how to deal with people, people that are going through real things. I have a friend who lost three family members to Corona. If that's your employee, you've got to know how to deal with that, right? So you've got to show them that you are emotionally intelligent and that you can handle these issues and deal with people in the workplace with a sense of empathy and concern, like you care, right? And the other thing too, is they wanna know that you can work remote, embrace technology, you know, lead a team remotely, all of that's gonna be a strong point now, right? So those are some things that you know, I want you to think about as you embark on this new journey in your job search, because being qualified is good, but it's not enough anymore. You've got to really show that you're evolving with this pandemic that's going on. Okay. Let's see. Now, while you're going through all of this and your job searching and everything, take some time to, to brush up on some new skills, right? There's so many trainings that, you know, Harvard's offering free courses and things like that. Stay fresh, stay active because, you know, if you sit on the couch, you watch the news all day, and you go apply here or there, right? <laughs> you're going to to get stale and so you want to stay fresh you want to keep your skills new and take advantage 
of the opportunity to learn online right now. Also, you know, another way to stay fresh is to volunteer your time somehow, right? If you're an accountant and you're out of work because your company, you know, laid you off or went under or whatnot, maybe you can do some pro bono work, um, helping some organization do their accounting. So now you have something to say to fill in that time where they're like, well, what have you been doing during, you know, your layoff? Well, not much. No, I've been volunteering my time, keeping my accounting skills fresh, and I've been helping this company keep their books, et cetera. That sounds a whole lot better, right? And then another um, option is to really explore opportunities to offer your services, you know, in exchange for fees as a contractor in a consulting capacity, perhaps, right? So if you're good with technology, for example, there's a lot of small businesses that don't know how to handle a Zoom <laughs> call or session. Then you can offer your services to say, hey, I know you're going through a lot, but I have a skill set that you can use to help you, you know, adapt and incorporate Zoom so you can still have a business going and still have, you know, team trainings and meetings virtually. You know, don't be afraid to kind of go that route either because you never know, companies are just full of people. So don't get intimidated and think, oh, it's a company. There's still a person that will make that decision and say, yes, I need your help. So, you know, think about that as well as you, you're transitioning. Hey, Melanie. Above all, yes. We should uh, add one thing to your last slide there. Um, yeah. Just because I know that finding volunteer opportunities can be tough sometimes and, and knowing mm -hmm. where to look for that. Mm -hmm. and I just happen to know that there's a... Um, a foundation based here in Seattle called Taproot, Taproot Foundation. And what they do is you go on their site and you tell them what kind of skills you have. And mm -hmm. then they try to match you with looking for um, volunteers that can help out. So whether it's, uh, you know, broad skills across the spectrum. So I'll, I'll post that in the, the chat as well, because that might be a helpful resource right now. Yes, very helpful. And is that, you said they're based in Seattle. Yes. Do the opportunities go across the country or is it just they yes, they're, they're all across the country and most of them are set up for remote anyway. Um, so um, you could, you know, help out an organization pretty much anywhere. Yes, I love that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. I'm going to jot that down. Tap root. Yeah, it looks like a few people are, are posting some other websites in the chat as well. Perfect. So I love it. To check that out. Good. I love the information sharing. Awesome. All right, well, we're almost to the home stretch. I just wanted to throw this in here because you got to take care of yourself. You know, there's a lot happening and you don't want to get stressed out. You don't want to get burnt out. You don't want to fall into depression. So maybe you can use this time to discover or rediscover a passion that you had or get a hobby, right? Prioritize you know, make, taking a walk around the block for some fresh air, take breaks. You know, I know we want to just get a job, get a job, get money in the door, but you need those mental breaks, right? Whatever it helps you to keep motivated and keep your energy up, that's what you need to do. And sometimes it's just quiet time to just breathe, right? So keep that in mind. Make sure you practice taking care of yourself throughout all of this. That's really the most important. Because if you're not energetic, not feeling well, not motivated, you're not going to be very productive. And you're, you know, I'm sure you, you have bills and you have a family that's probably dependent on you. So you got to be your best throughout all of this. Question time, or do you want to? This this is good. Um, yeah, let's let's get into some questions. Uh, everyone, continue adding questions to the chat. And um, while... so, uh, someone asked Melanie, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're if they're expecting to get laid off, or they're they know that they will be laid off, um, is there any way or any reason to indicate that on a on a resume or a LinkedIn profile? No. No, <laughs> no, I think that you save that for the discussion when they say, while you're looking to make a move, then you can disclose that. Um, 
you you don't want to throw it out there like, hey, I'm on a sinking ship here. Uh, I'm trying to get off, right? Because you may not be. It's your it's your <laughs> prediction, and you may be right, but you don't want to throw your company under the bus like that if you don't need to. Not publicly in that way. Definitely, you could bring it up in a conversation, but I wouldn't put it on a resume, or I wouldn't put it on your LinkedIn. And uh, I just want to address uh, Lily's question here, um, asking where to get that job search success kit. Uh, just keep an eye out on your email. We'll, we'll make sure that everyone that's registered um, gets a chance to uh, look into that and, and purchase it. Um, got, a, got a nice question here early in the chat from, from Sally Rada, who says, um, I have an employer who has been supportive. What are some things that I could do to show my gratitude? Can you repeat it? You have an employer? An employer that has been, you know, really supportive in this time. What mm -hmm. are some things I could do to show my gratitude? Oh, I love that because so you, if you can, you, well, is it a person? If there's a specific person like your boss or your boss's boss or a colleague or something like that, I would say send them a gift, right? Send them a gift card, an Amazon gift card, something like that to show their appreciation if you can kind of dance around it to figure out the love language, right? You could try to see what a, a good gift would be. Cause some people like gifts. Some people would prefer, you know, something you do for them. Um, so I would say show your gratitude by um, giving a gift or making a card and signing it and saying thank you so much i appreciate it make a a, a public acknowledgement somehow right i know linkedin has a feature you could do kudos or something like that that would be cool right to highlight your company or your boss or whoever that's another good way to do it and it could be just going to them and saying thank you i really appreciate all of this and letting them know how much it means to you that they're being so supportive. That's, that's great. Um, Lisa asks um, whether you have any insight into, is, is there an advantage to applying to jobs through a company's website versus Glassdoor or Indeed, LinkedIn? Yeah, I, I would definitely, if you can, recommend going straight to the um, company website. I think the, the major advantage is that you know it went straight to them. And sometimes the third party sites, the information can get a little garbled because technology, there's an added thing to deliver it and da 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 da. And so um, the advice is always to try to find the actual job mm -hmm. on their website. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Um, here's one that just came in from Anissa. Uh, Things, should I disclose that I had an internal reorganization and therefore downsized or can I, or should I disclose that information in an interview or how would you handle that situation? If they ask, do not, you don't need to volunteer it, right? But if they ask or if the topic comes up, then yeah, you definitely share it, share it in a way where it's still positive, right? So I like to say sandwich it. Um, start with something positive, say yes, but unfortunately I was let go because X, Y, and Z, and then spin it. But now I have an opportunity to pursue roles like this where I can actually do X, Y, Z, or whatever, you know, however you want to explain or show why this was a blessing in the mm -hmm. Great. We've got a follow up to that um, mm -hmm. job posting one. Uh, Philip asks, uh, what if the actual job doesn't show up on the company website, even though it's on another job board? Mm, interesting. Then just apply on the job board and try to dig, right? I mean, you could call the company and say, hey, I saw this posting, uh, but I don't see it on your website and see if it still exists. Sometimes it just means that that site hasn't updated the information yet because sometimes they put it in numerous places and it doesn't exist in one place over another place because they either took it down um, or it expired or whatever the case may be. So I would say call them up if you can and just ask a question to the HR department. 
yeah, I, I would agree with that as well. It just I'll, I'll add because I, I've done it in the past is, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you see a discrepancy like that, that's a, a really easy icebreaker to reach out to um, a recruiter or a hiring manager. Say, hey, I noticed that this this job posting is uh, isn't on your website, but it is here. Is this still open? I'd be really interested. And that's just a, a really easy way to kind of break that ice. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, regarding unemployment, uh, mm -hmm. Emil asks um, if you have any additional suggestions for H-1B visa or uh, F-1 OPT students who have really limited days of unemployment. Mm. Do you have any insight into that? Not a whole lot, to be honest. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to touch on the immigration stuff. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to share about that. I would just say make sure you, you know, make some phone calls and see if there's any way to extend it because of what's going on. I don't know what the, you know, what immigration is doing. I, I, I will say I do not know. <laughs> better, better, better safe there. Um, I'll just say a general comment to people ask, who have been asking questions throughout. Um, there's some really uh, nitty gritty resume and, and LinkedIn questions. Um, I really recommend checking out some of these other uh, webinars that are going to get into you know much yeah. more detail on things with you know resumes and ATS or um, yeah. getting recruiters to reach out to you on LinkedIn. So uh, be sure to check those out. Once again, that's uh, jobscan.co slash no dash fear. Uh, let's see, anything else here? Uh, Amy asks, how to show your enthusiasm when reaching out to recruiters or hiring managers? Ooh. Like, What are some good ways to, uh, to sound compelling and get that conversation started? So I think in order to do that well, you're going to need to really do some research and figure out what is going to capture their attention and be compelling. So if there's a company out there that you want to work for, do some research or figure out what are they facing right now? What challenges are going on right now? If there's something on their LinkedIn feed that's, you know, showing stuff that they just did, right? You can bring those things up. So they, they will attach to it because that's what's going on right now in their company. And so that'll capture their attention for sure. Um, I think, you know, just talking about you and all the things that you've done is not going to achieve that excitement um, unless, again, it totally aligns with what they need right now. So you can talk about yourself a little bit, but then always flip it and say, I think um, this experience would be great because right now I'm sure you need X, Y, Z, which is what I'm really good at. Do you have five minutes to chat? Right? So things like that will capture their attention versus your traditional, hi, I saw this posting. I would like to express my interest. Here's my resume. Everyone says that. Great. All right. Well, we're, we're just about up at our time. Um, I know there's a lot of questions in here that didn't get answered. Uh, we'll continue sorting through those and seeing if we can reach out um, to people either individually or as a group and, and get some of the, the more pertinent uh, questions answered. But thank, thank you, you so much for everyone uh, joining us. It was a great crowd here. And yeah. uh, thank you, Melanie, for, for joining us in this webinar series. Uh, really, really enjoyed your presentation. Yay, I enjoyed giving it. And thank you so much for everyone for asking good questions and engaging. And thanks, John, for putting this together. It was great. Awesome. Online listings make applying for jobs easier than ever. So why aren't you getting a response from employers? Easy applications means more applicants, which means more competition. Leading companies use automated software tools called Applicant Tracking Systems, or ATS, that weed out many resumes before they even reach a real person. So how do you cut through the noise? With JobScan. JobScan uses artificial intelligence to get your resume past the filters. We've reverse engineered their systems to create an intelligent tool that provides proprietary insights to optimize your resume at a much deeper level. So you can tailor your resume for each job based on precise keywords and skills most valued by the company. JobScan can even optimize your LinkedIn profile so company recruiters find you before you even know they're looking for your skill set. Let JobScan maximize your chances with every application. 
Register for your free account and run your first scan today.